Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anuskanti Dash, a general and laparoscopic surgeon and I am welcoming you all in another video. In my previous video, I have discussed about sebaceous cyst and today I am going to describe another cystic swelling or a semi-solid swelling termed as dimert cyst. This dimert cyst is also very commonly encountered in ward practice or clinical practice. So learning to describe or learning to examine dimert cyst is also essential for your clinical practice. And if I want to describe the front page picture, there are <laughs> this picture doesn't need any description actually. They are my parents, my adorable, my respected parents. And very rare and adorable picture. Okay, affectionate picture. Okay, let's begin. And before starting, I will request you everyone to uh, watch the video as well as like and comment in the comment section for your inquiries and subscribe if you like the video and for the far further future updates. Okay, the disclaimer and the warning shots. The examination scenario as usual. First of all, you will greet your examiner and as well as the patient. Okay, and then examiner you will ask that examine the swelling over the scalp and you start washing your hands in between the time. Okay, make this thing a practice. So there is a swelling and that swelling is in the scalp. Okay. So the scenario, you have treated your patient, now the report. Hmm. After reporting that yes, uh, okay, Mr. Omuk, I am, I am a medical uh, student or I am an, a final prof examinee and for my examination, I need to ask you some question as well as I need to examine you. And during the examination period, I will not give any pain and you will not get any discomfort as well. And if you find any pain or discomfort, please let me know, I will do accordingly. Then the permission that, okay, let's start. Okay, or let, can, you, can I examine? After he gives you the permission, then you start asking, the, okay, uh, what is your problem? What is your problem? Then the duration, the how long this swelling is in your scalp? Okay. Then uh, what was the original size or what was the size when you first noticed the lump? Actually, the question differs. Okay. And actually, we cannot, the, most of the patient cannot describe that what was the actual size when it was first started. They actually define the size when they first notice it. And you can ask also the how did you notice or what asked you to notice the lump. Okay, it is essential for uh, examining a child tumor. Okay, mostly the mother told that they examined the lump or they defined the lump while bathing. Okay, most of, or many lumps can be uh, experienced, can be felt by the partner, male partner or female partner of the patient okay so the the that question also essential after that you start inspecting and uh, about ask about the progression that what is whether the swing is enlarging rapidly or it is enlarging slowly then about the multiplicity though diamond is not that was multiple swelling but you should ask and any pain or any discomfort or any other sort of symptoms okay then you start describing as per running give running commentary like sir i am giving or uh, that there is a there is a globular shape shaped swelling in mid scalp region measuring about two centimeter in length and two centimeter in breadth as you have stated the globular swelling so length and breadth will be equal that will be equal then the surface goes sequentially the surface is smooth margin is well defined or regular no scar mark no visible pulsation, no visible vein, and no visible impulse on coughing. Okay, we'll describe it later. Okay, new thing. Then start palpation. Before palpating, you ask about any pain. Okay, and again, start with examining the temperature, and you say that temperature is not raised. Temperature is not raised. Okay, and while examining the temperature, you need to assess with the forehead okay yes this is not bilateral symmetrical organ so assess with 
assess the temperature of swelling with the back of the fingers with the, and compare with the forehead. And swelling is not tender, the size is globular, that means 3 cm and 3 cm, and surface is smooth and margin is well defined. Swelling is mobile in all directions, neither it is fixed with the overlying skin nor with the underlying st structure. But mind it that swelling can be fixed as the tension of the skin of the uh, scalp is more. Okay. And the request is for examination, you need to visit my previous videos. And the consistency, consistency will be soft and the sign of indentation present, present, sleeping sign negative, not compressible, fluctuation test positive and transformation test negative as it contains, doesn't contain any clear fluid. That's why the fluctuation test is positive but transformation test is negative. After examination completion, you will thank the patient. As the swelling is in scalp, there is no issue of the exposing, so need not to permit permission for the privacy, so you need not to ask for any attendant, okay, or you need not to expose properly, okay. Okay, so examination differs from patient to patient. And that is the sign of indentation. You will press in the middle of the swelling, and the swelling will uh, indent, or there will be depression of the swelling. It is applicable for sebaceous cyst as well as dermoid cyst. And now the uh, examination scenario. Uh, now it is the what is your clinical diagnosis? So you definitely say the dermoid cyst in mid scalp region, and then the why dermoid cyst? So history: there is slowly progressive disease. Then there is soft inconsistency, and there is sign of indentation present. Okay, okay. There are some, uh, another question, there is sites of congenital dermoid, the midline of the trunk. Dermoids are four types, mostly there is uh, some uh, out of this congenital dermoid, the implantation dermoid, teratomatous dermoid also there, tubular dermoid also there. This congenital dermoid usually occurs in the sutural lines, fusion lines, like midline of the body, midline of the trunk anywhere the spines okay the chest cavities and that can occur in outer and outer or inner ends of upper eyebrow inner canthus of upper eyebrow there is frontal and general maxillary process fusion line okay also in the posterior region the posterior dermoid is also common okay if then you ask me how we will differentiate it from the sebaceous cyst okay then you will tell that this is the search, sebaceous cyst differentiate with by punctum in inspection and there is sebaceous cyst is fixed to the skin but dermoid cyst is not okay but in case of scalp sebaceous cyst that is also fixed with the swell, uh, scalp as well as there is no punctum so it is hard to differentiate so sight is very important if you find any midline swelling or any swelling near to the fusion line, you may tell that it is uh, dermoid cyst, okay, because that is easier to defend, okay. So in your clinical practice examination, your defense line is need to be very strong. If you give explanation for everything, even if you tell the wrong things, you will pass, okay. So what clinical examination in addition to the previously mentioned to be examined, in, to determine the dermoid cyst, you need to examine two more things. One is the calf impulse or test we have described and another bony indentation. Okay. So what is bony indentation? First thing the indentation means you will press over the mid part of the swelling with your index finger and there will be a depression that is indentation test. But in case of sebus dermoid cyst there is bony indentation as this dermoid cyst lies near the mesoderm and you know that bones develop from mesoderm that's why that dermoid cyst indents bone indentation project that means you can create a depression over the bones okay so there is a, there is a swelling and you, how that you are given the margin with the index finger, na? encircle like margin over the 
bony markings. And you will find that there is some indentation present while you will inspect the bony indentation. So, over the swelling, you will just press like margin and you will feel that there is bones like pitted, the soft in consistency. That is bony indentation. Okay. And another thing is the calf impulse test. You know, calf impulse test is used to look for the reducible swellings like hernia most commonly, but it can, uh, it, 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 clinical importance is hernia, that means protrusion of any viscous from normal to abnormal con condition. So it can occur in chest cavity also, cranial cavity also, spinal cavity also, okay, abdominal cavity also. So yes, this is cranium, the scalp, that swelling may come from the internal bony uh, brain interior. Okay, so calf impulse is essentially here. And to assess the calf impulse, okay, first of all, that is seen in two prospects. One inspection, one is palpation. Inspection means visual impulse on calf. So on inspection, first of all, you need to steady the swelling with your left hand. Okay, steady the scalp. Okay, otherwise you cannot ascertain the scalp, uh, calf impulse test. First of all, steady hand. Okay, that's the most important point. Then you ask to calf. If you don't steady the patient's head, the assessment will not be proper. Okay, this is visual impulse and coughing. Okay, you will see that swelling is more prominent or not. Okay. Then while palpating, you again steady head with any hand, your left hand or right hand. Then place your right hand over the swelling. Now you want to look for the expansal impulse, whether on coughing the, the swelling expanses and that will be felt by your right hand, okay, palm of your right hand. After that you ask to cough, okay, that will be expansal impulse on coughing. So that is another in clinical test we need to assess for any scalp swelling, okay, the cough impulse, cough impulse test. Now the similar question that what will you do now? Then, sir, I will go, uh, I will counsel the patient as well as I will go for some routine test to, for the surgery. Okay. And before that uh, clinical test, if you find anything calf impulse test positive, you need to, that thing will be complicated. We will discuss later. So, first of all, what surgery will go for? This? Next, I will go for the complete excision of the cyst. Then, what anesthesia and why? Okay, so we go for the general anesthesia. Though the swelling is small, but we will go for general anesthesia. Why? As that cyst, diameter cyst, bone indentation, that may come from mesoderm, that may be dissected from sensitive pericranium also. The bones, the scalp is lying. So that cyst dissection may be needed to dissect it from sensitive pericranium. The patient may get pain. That's why. General anesthesia is more preferable, though it is small in size. And if it is larger, then what is obviously general anesthesia? And this cyst may have intracranial anesthesia. Okay, so general anesthesia is mandatory here. And how will incise? It is typical that incision will be linear, and if the swelling is larger, incision will be elliptical. We all know. And linear means linear, elliptical means ellipse. Okay, if you find that calf impulse is positive, what additional investigation you will advise? So, you need to know that whether that is come from the bony brain or not, herniated from brain. So, for that, we know go for the imaging study, maybe MRI or CT scan. Okay, that will find that whether anything coming out from the bones or not. Okay. After that, if that calf impulse is positive and if we found that that swelling has communication with the brain interior, then what will you do? The answer is similar. Yes, sir, I consult with the neurosurgeon and operate him after proper assessing or proper imaging and proper counseling and with accordance with the neurosurgical surgeon, we will go for the operation. Okay, that is the answer. Okay. There is also a swelling, it is in the external dermoid and you are finding that there is a previous scar mark. 
okay that is previous karma that indicates that it is recurrent so if you uh, if you see find any patient over there describe the karma properly it is one is line that line and that that line so describe the karma properly and you will be asked that what is the cause of what are the cause of recurrence first of all the technical factors the surgeon inadequately you don't identify the uh, could not remove the swelling the surgeon's fault the pathology fault also that multilocated okay or the infected that may the the operation may be done in infected state that's why the proper operation could not be done proper surgery could not be done so these are the things the cause of recurrence is very essential if you find such swelling in your clinical practice okay so i think that's uh, all for today you, uh, we don't we know about uh, the examining of semi solid swelling like severe cyst and dermoid cyst and we need to differentiate as dermoid cyst from severe cyst cyst as well as we have discussed about some calf impulse test or bone indentation test i think that video was helpful for you and if you find that helpful please subscribe my channel and comment in comment section and i hope that is helped and thank you very much for watching thank you